Ben Cricky's a Valpo transfer. Good score, considered to be a below average rebounder and defender. I thought he's looked pretty good on the boards and the glass here the first couple of games. But man, I, I just, uh, this is going to be a test. When I mean, you're talking about seven foot one Kalkbrenner um, and Trout's got size and length as well. Um, what what's what would you say? I mean, I've looked up a couple of numbers here. I was looking at Action Network, and I'm certainly not a better myself. But as far as I'm always interested to see what the spread is yeah. for these teams. What would you rate the spread? What would you think it would be right now? I would think ten, maybe. I'm seeing I'm seeing numbers closer to fifteen to twenty. Boy, that's a lot. Uh, a lot. You know, of, it is. I, I think Creighton. You know, I mean, let's face it. Creighton's top ten of the country, so. You know, um, and then obviously the crowd's going to be, yeah, it's going to be crazy in there. Um, KITV, KITV, I don't know where they're getting their, their, uh, their information here, but this is a computer predicted spread. They've got Creighton by 22. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know, matchup wise. I Iowa were there, but, but I could see it. I could see a blow. I can do. You, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I could cool. also see a 15 to 10 to a close game, you know, so it's kind of going to be dependent on uh, how the game flows and how good of a start Creighton gets out to. I do. I do think like if you're an under over guy, man, I, I, I want to see the under over in this one. That's uh, unlike Iowa football games that have set records for the lowest. OK, this has got to be over 160 easily. I would yeah. say one. It might go to 170. KITV's got the computer predicted total at 162.8. Yeah. So. See, that's a, yeah, I would think even that I would, because that's four points a minute. That's, yeah, I, I think these two teams can really get going, especially if, say, say Creighton does get out to 20, then, you know, you always, that team that's behind always seems to come down and hit a couple of threes and, you know, that, sure. that total can go over in a hurry, but yeah, that'll be interesting. I well, would think I would, would want to pull Kalkbrenner out. Okay, a lot of teams try and do that. It doesn't always work uh, because he, even, you know, he's so long, he can still, he doesn't have to go all the way out to defend properly. And he can still come back. And they may, they may say, okay, you want to pull him on, you got to, you got to hit some threes on us. You know, even I think last year when Sonogo was at UConn, you know, one of the better centers in the country, Creighton just said, okay. You're going to pull our guy out, go ahead, and God bless him. He he's, he knocked down a lot of threes, but uh, their their defense is predicated on on something like that. So that'll be interesting to see. That'll be the cat and mouse. Be interesting to see is that going to open up some driving lanes, like we mentioned. You know uh, the two weaknesses on the defensive end for Creighton. If that's going to open up driving lanes and then kickouts for threes and so forth. And, and I'll be intrigued if when I was playing man, and I don't know how much you can go man against a team that uh, presents some mismatches, not just with size, but with with skill level. I, I do I do look at matchups, and it's like it, to me, it's pretty obvious who I was going to stick on who. I mean, I would expect Tony Perkins to guard Trey Alexander almost all night. I mean, yeah. he's considered their best backcourt defender. He's about the same size, and um, I would ex- obviously expect them to go uh Ben Cricky on Kalkbrenner when they're in the man I, again I don't know how much you can really do that with a 68 center transfer from Valpo um and then you know you would expect someone like Brock Harding slash DeSante Bowen to guard Ashworth and I would assume Bailey Shireman is a Patrick McCaffrey assignment so but I'll be intrigued to see how Fran you know Fran likes to switch up the defenses and he's probably gonna have to do that a lot I guess yeah, I would, that's I would think so. to do on Tuesday yeah, McCafferty and Baylor would be yeah size wise that would be a good matchup. Um, I, I yeah sometimes uh, teams have thrown like in the past teams have thrown one three ones at Creighton and it's kind of confused them like especially if you press it out a little bit and get to trapping in that corner or on the wing. Um, but again, you're you're just really picking your because then that kind of opens up when you go one three one and you reverse it that opens up that inside post up to Kalkbrenner. And so, um, yeah, it, I, I wouldn't – the thing, too, I think to notice about Creighton is these first two games, they – being at practice a lot, they've shown nothing. What they run in practice, they haven't shown anything. They've got some sets that are 
really pretty advanced and complicated that they can do now because they had that trip to Bahamas this summer. So the newcomers got used to it. And Ashworth is so intelligent. I mean, he and Mac are just totally in sync. So he's picked up things fast and they've got a lot of sets. If you go man to man, they can really create some mismatches and get some open shots. Tim Kruger of Blue Jay Banter, and he's at TK Brackets on uh, Stadium. Um, Tim, I wanted to ask you about uh, bracketology, but sure. uh, we're going to run out of time. But give me a sense for for November, what this is like uh, as a bracketologist. I know you're covering the Creighton beat, but how much are you looking at? I don't even say resumes. We're two games into the season, but wow. what is bracketology like this early in the season? I, I don't like doing one this early, but everybody else does, so I have to. It's just throwing darts. It really is. And I just kind of go, you know, you look at the numbers, you look how they were projected in their conference at their uh, conference media days and where teams are stacked up, and then you just kind of get a feel for some teams. Like um, I just, you know, some people, my first bracket, I had all the big top three Big East teams were all in the top ten. I had them all three seeds. And everybody's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I just – at all three of them, I see little flaws. And so until I get a bigger volume of games, I can't tell you that they're all going to be there, you know. Um, same with Iowa. I, I just don't know, like a team, I was a perfect example. I just don't know how how good the Big Ten is going to be this year. And, uh, wow, <laughs> after that Michigan State game, you're all, you know, I'm Michigan State like a two seed, you know. Now you're like, whoa, you know, if they're not going to be there to battle Purdue, um, they haven't looked even very good in the other game I saw them play. So that would be the big thing, like, for instance, on the Iowa team. Uh, you know, I had Missouri, you know, all these early, early games, sometimes you, you can't put too much into them, but you got to remember them when March rolls around. St. Mary's losing to Weber State. Uh, Missouri kind of getting their doors blown off by Memphis was a shocker to me. I thought Missouri was going to take another step forward this year. So you kind of got to look, you know, Rutgers, a team, I thought, even though they lost some, I thought, okay, this is a team that's, that's really building a program there is going to be good. And then they, they lose to Princeton. Now, no, no fault in losing to Princeton. Princeton's a tough team to play against and a tough team to, to beat. But um, yeah, so early on, I'm just throwing darts. Look, uh, I, I like it like Arizona Duke. Okay, Arizona goes into Cameron and wins. That's damn impressive. I don't care if it was the first week of the season or not. That's really impressive. That's something that's going to stick on their resume forever. Go and get a true road win. Um, and, and and I think you know if Iowa could beat Creighton, that would be huge in, in looking in March. So that's why this is a big game. Creighton's just kind of got to serve hold. This is their first real challenge. Their holiday tournament is terrible because Missouri pulled out of it. So the holiday tournament is Creighton, Boston College, Colorado State, and Loyola. So it's Creighton should close their eyes and roll through that. They go to Oklahoma State. They lost to Abilene Christian. Again, another good team. So they're really going to have one test, really, besides Iowa, and that would be Alabama. They play late in December. So they could roll through the non-conference undefeated. And then, you know, when you're talking bracketology wise, yeah, now you're putting them in a one, two seed range. And it's fair to say based on non-conference schedules, this is not the most difficult Iowa non-conference schedule either. They go to San Diego play, you know, potentially a couple of, you know, Oklahoma, potentially USC, um, maybe a little bit higher quality than what Creighton's got in their Thanksgiving week tournament. But this game on Tuesday is going to be, significant for both teams even if we're not projecting iowa to be a tournament team i think most people expect them to be you know in consideration for a bid um assuming that they fulfill expectations this is a big game for both teams I'm, yeah I'm, and i would first limited. first four out in my first bracket so tim kruger of uh, tk brackets and blue jay banter over at the rivals network uh tim uh, we appreciate the time and we'll look forward to omaha on uh, tuesday yeah by the way omaha fans if you you know after the game I know it'll be late, but if you're going to hang around and stay the whole night in Omaha, come on over to the Light of Fly Sports Bar just right next to CHI. We do our post game live in the podcast studio. It's broadcast on a couple of TVs there. You get a set of headphones, listen to the whole show. So if you want to hear our thoughts on the game, uh, check it out. And, uh, hey, Corey, we'll be, we'll be back with you later in the year. Talk racketology. Absolutely, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you.